Hey friends, welcome to the seventh episode of the Sunday Knitting Society podcast. My name is Chelsea and I'm a knitter in Oklahoma City. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. Um, so this is the first of my weekly podcast in December. And honestly, I thought I wasn't going to have that much to talk about, but you should see the pile. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be, buckle up, it's going to be a long one. Um, so it has officially gotten like chilly here. I think it's like, it's 34 degrees right now, so it's, you know, cold. <laughs> um, so it's great sweater weather and hat weather and cow weather and all the knit sweater. Um, yeah, so this morning my plan was to go to the Harvey Bakery and have breakfast and do some knitting and listen to a podcast or an audiobook. And then I ran into a friend on the way in and we spent the whole time talking and it was lovely. So I got no, I think I did like two stitches, <laughs> but I just, it's hard for me to hold a conversation with a non-knitter um, and knit at the same time. It's just, I don't feel like I'm giving them my my full attention. So um, yeah, my knitting stayed in my bag, but that's okay. Um, so I guess I'll just get right into it. Uh, I don't remember if this was done last time or not. I guess I could look, but I don't feel like it. So. Uh, if it's, if I talked about it last time, I'm sorry, you're going to hear about it again. <laughs> so this is my Monday sweater, number two. Um, I knit this in Durham Natura Ulysse in the color Biche, which means dough in French. Um, I love this sweater so much. It's so interesting because it is a little bit toothy. Like the yarn is not like cashmere soft, but it's soft. And it's one of those, like, you never want to take it off. Like, I just want to wear this all the time. And I'm really proud of myself with this sweater because I find that swatches, they're a good starting point, but they're not always accurate. And I don't think you can really make them truly accurate because no matter how big your swatch is, it's never going to have the weight of the full sweater. And so when you block it, things are still going to grow more in the real sweater. So my last Monday sweater, I also made it out of a yarn that I think just would naturally grow a little bit more. Um, and it grew so much that I'm actually still in the middle of sweater surgery on it, which is fine. I'll finish it eventually. Um, but this one, I intentionally went down a size and knit like the sleeve shorter and the body shorter. And so when I blocked it, it turned out perfect. So I'm gonna stand, you guys might get to see my tights that are covered in yarn fuzz and dog hair. Um, but so it's like, find my little unmatching tank top underneath. Um, so it's like the perfect length, the sleeves fit perfectly for me. Um, I did a regular bind off on the, the body cause I didn't feel like doing a sewn bind off or a tubular bind off. And then on the wrist, I did do a sewn bind off, which I still don't know if I did it right. But I kind of like it and I did it on both so they match but um and then I did a folded neck or collar um I did make my folded collar bigger or like longer than the pattern calls for I think I went like another inch um and when I was trying it on before I blocked it it was like <laughs> like strangling me a little bit but with blocking it like perfectly uh relaxed and so it's not too open, but it's not strangling me either. Um, I've worn this sweater so many times since I finished it. Uh, it it's itchy enough that if it were warm outside, like if we're in the 70s, I'm not going to be able to wear this. But we're in the 30s right now. It is perfect sweater weather. So um, I do have my window cracked open just a little bit. So um we can get a little bit of extra, uh, oh, I just hit something on my watch. I was trying to clear it and I hit another thing. So this is, uh, FO number one. I have one other FO. Um, and it's small, but I am in love with it. So 
I'm not sure. Okay, so it's it's folded. It's supposed to be folded. But I did a watch cap hat. And I think when I wear this, I kind of look like a little old lady. <laughs> but I love it. Um, so I did, I kind of hacked the pattern a little bit. So, where'd it go? So this is some of my hand spun. And um, so at Thanksgiving, my parents came and stayed with me and they stayed in the guest room, which is the room that we're in right now. And it, this room has just become like a catch-all. And so it's really quite cluttered and it needed to be cleaned out. And I have like back there, uh, is my attic access and it's really easy to get into. Um, but it was like cram packed full of like holiday decorations and old boxes and things like that. And then I had like an old table under the guest bed because I have nowhere else to put it. And so my dad is like the Tetris master and he like that man can pack more stuff in a car or a box than any other person I know. And so I asked him if he would just kind of take a look and maybe make some space. And he, you give my dad a task and he is on it. Um, so he completely cleaned out my attic, um, moved stuff under the bed, out into the shed, outside. So completely like made all, like everything under my bed was gone and moved it all into the attic and made tons of extra room and so I had, I had more room for yarn. <laughs> so I like got some underbed storage totes and put like scraps and things I'm not gonna use anytime soon. Um, and when I was doing that, I found a bin of my hand spun yarn. So I started spinning, I think this summer or the spring, it had to be the spring. It wasn't, I don't think I was spinning last year. Um, and I got really into it um, like the first few months and then I just lost all desire to spin. And so everything just kind of, like I still, <laughs> I'm in the middle of a spin right now and I don't know if, what the what you're supposed to do with the spinning wheel. I have an e-spinner. I didn't, I just left it with a mostly done spool of yarn or bobbin of yarn um, or ply words um but anyway so I haven't finished that I'm I need to but I found this hand dyed and I was like hand dyed um hand spun I was like that's really pretty why haven't I used this so I was like I'm gonna knit something with it and so I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do a rib beanie I've heard a lot of people say that they like the the crown decreases on the watch cap and my hair is just like what is that you see that that's just what my hair does on its own Anyway, so I've heard people say they really like the the crown decreases on the watch cap, and I'd never knit one before. It's a free pattern from Pearl Soho. I think it's called the watch cap hat and knits. Um, but it's for a sport weight, I believe, or a fingering weight. So it's they have you knit it on a US 3, and this is at least a worsted, if not like an Aran weight. Um, and so what I did was I just, I went to a size five needle and I knit the infant size which is 120 stitches um but then I knit it to the length for the large adult so it's quite long and that was mostly just because I wanted to use this yarn uh, I didn't want to like I also like when I I tried it on just like this and I like this fit better actually or this um style but it wasn't as warm and so I figured I'm gonna have tons extra let's just make it to where I can roll it but I have a big head to begin with like <laughs> I'm a normally large head um and so when you have an extra layer it is nice and toasty but it makes my head look enormous um which I'm cool with you know big head big brain but <laughs> um you know this uh, yeah so I I like it but it is definitely not my typical style but I also didn't know when I was spinning this because I was very, very new, still am, that it would stripe. I think that's pretty cool. So I have a little bit left. 
I don't know how many, how many yards of this I had. I think at one point I did, I actually bought that thing that's supposed to count your yardage, estimate it, um, based on your wraps per inch, but I don't remember. I took notes and then I think the notes got thrown away. So I have a whole bin, Not it's not a lot. I probably have like four more skeins of different Spun, hand spun yarn and I have absolutely no idea what this fiber is I don't know where it's from <laughs> I don't know anything about it uh I want to say this was the name of this was something like like book bookworm or something it had something to do with books or libraries that's all I remember but it's really made me want to like start spinning again so I have just a little bit of fiber left for the one I'm, I had been doing that's still on my spinner. So I think I'm going to finish that. And then we're just jumping all over the place today. I apologize for crinkling. But I had this, uh, this was the October Fiber Club from Hello Yarn. And it's called Double Double Toil and Trouble. But it's just this really pretty like plum and lavender and orange and browns like some blueies in there and it's uh Falkland Merino so I think I might take a whack at that once I'm done with Christmas knitting which there's there's not a ton of Christmas knitting it's just that Christmas is three weeks away and I need to get on that uh, but yeah so this is my only I'm gonna leave this on because I like it this is my only other FO this week, I have been the queen of the whip. That sounds weird. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what got into me this week. I am normally a relatively monogamous knitter. Like I'll have multiple projects going at once, but I typically only work on one at a time. I'll have like a small project to take with me and then like a sweater project or something. And then like a long-term project that I kind of knit on in between the main projects. But um, I had cast on itis this week, and so I just, I have a lot of whips. Um, so the first one, I, it's kind of, it's a hoe. It's a half finished object. So I did another set of the penny gloves by Petite Knit. Um, so this was in the Holst Garn, the Super Soft that I bought in Amsterdam. And I did this because they were gonna have a Black Friday sale or, or a small business Saturday, I don't remember which one, but around that time, they were gonna have a sale. And I've heard from many people that once you wash and block this yarn, it softens up significantly um, because it is not the most pleasant. Like it is, it's definitely kind of rough um, so there's, there's my other one. Oh, it's that far in on the other one. But I, my parents came in on Wednesday last week and I decided like Wednesday night before they got there, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make one of these because then I can wash it and block it in a short period of time. I can know by Friday if I like this yarn. And then if I do, I'm gonna buy some yarn. Um, or it's got like little, they've got these, I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm assuming it's either some like vegetal, veg, vegetative, vegetable matter, hay or something, but, or if, I don't know if that's part of the yarn, but I pulled like big long pieces of this out and it doesn't, this stuff doesn't normally bother me. Like Pearl Soho has this in there, but these are like big chunks and it kind of annoys me. Um, but anyway, so this yarn, I can confirm this softens up a lot when you block it and it fuzzes out a lot too. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you can kind of see my finger behind this. Like it is, it feels pretty holy. If I turn around, it'll be a little easier. So yeah, it's kind of, doesn't look like it'd keep you that warm, but this like it's, that's pretty fuzzed out. I don't know. Fuzzed out. I'm sure there's a better term for that. Bloom. That's the term. 
That's how stout works. Um, so yeah, I have one done. I'm using this as my church knitting right now because it's just really easy to do. I have this pattern pretty much memorized. I say that except for I think I did a modification at the top of this and I don't remember what I did. Oh well, I'll figure it out. They're mins. Um, I don't, these are probably for me just because I don't really know anybody in my life who would want these. If I think of somebody then I'll, I'll do that. And I have it in my, my rhyme book, which I realize it says like, where was it? Yes, <laughs> it's 2020 on there. I went in 2022, <laughs> but I like this pattern better. And this is like the last thing they had in it. So I think that's just funny. Uh, so that's with number one. With number two, I think I showed last time, but I've made some progress on it. Okay, so this is my Sophie shawl. And I love this project. This is just soothing. This is kind of becoming like what the half and half triangle wrap is because it's very intuitive. Um, the way I kind of keep track of it is I put a little progress keeper on the, the front of my work on the right side. Oh yeah, there it is. it's like, oh crap, where is it? And then I have a little removable stitch marker that I put on the wrong side, but I put it in the, the first row. So you do like increases periodically on here. So well, periodically, I just want to say it because I don't want to like give away the pattern, but every few rows you do an increase. And so I mark this is row one. And then I know when I'm on, because this thing likes to flip over. So I know it has to be on the other side. So that's how I keep track of it. And then I just move this little marker every time I get to a new increase, like row one. Um, but I'm making this in Moondrake yarn in their BFL silk and their Fua Fua base, which is cashmere. And it's delightful. Uh, this is BFL and silk, as the name implies. Uh, and this is the lichen colorway. And I really, really like this. I think this is, this actually reminds me of my grandma Louie. Um, her name is Lois, but we always grew up calling her Louie. Um, but this just feels like, like she had a pea green Volkswagen bug when I was like a baby. Um, and pea green, I don't know, I've always associated it with her. So, it'll just be my, my grandma Louie scarf. Anyway, so that's that. That one's kind of in timeout right now, just because the other stuff I'm doing, like that's just very like, like that's anxiety knitting in a way. So if you're feeling more anxious, which I'm not right now, but you know, if I were, I'd pick that up and that would be my like soothing knitting. So I'm saving that <clears throat> for anxiety. <laughs> um, and then, okay, I got that three more whips. So this is the one I took to coffee or breakfast this morning and did nothing on. This is my Louvre sweater by Petite Knit. And my goal was to get to where this, I separate for the sleeves to make it easier to show you, <laughs> but I didn't get there. I'm literally like six rows away from peeing, from separating for the sleeves. So it's just, you're going to have to use some imagination to see this, but Huh? Oh my gosh, I love this so much. That's a pretty accurate color. It's it's called over easy and it looks like an egg yolk or like a marigold. I think ooh, this is so pretty. So I did I didn't do the 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 turtleneck as long. I don't like turtlenecks. To be honest, this is this is adventurous for me. Um, there's a chance I will end up going back and either folding this or ripping this out and doing it again. I don't, I get very anxious or like, I feel choked by things that are like on my neck. Um, so I actually knit it of the bigger needle and I'm hoping it will like block out. So it has more of like a fold or like very loose mock neck turtleneck thing. Um, but yeah. I'm like almost done. I'm just doing the body increases now. 
I, I really like raglans. I just like how neat and symmetric they look. My knitting is very uneven on this, which is kind of unusual for me. Like, you just see lots of like slanted stitches, which I'm not worried about that. That will block out, no problem. Um, that just looks a little messy. Um, so the sizing for this pattern, um, it kind of fell in an awkward spot for me. So I usually like like a 51 or a 52 inch bust and this had a 50 and a 53. And I don't like things to be really loose on me because I feel like that just isn't very flattering. I think it just makes me look like I'm drowning in knits. Um, but I feel like if it's a 50 and it's too much negative or like too much, too little positive ease, I'm not going to wear it because I'm not going to feel comfortable in it. Um, and then I, there you go. I actually swatched. So you're supposed to use a size four needle for the ribbing and a size six needle for the body. And this is not going to prove my point, but I swatched in a size six and you can kind of see behind it. I don't know. I just felt like this was too loose of a gauge. Um, now that I'm looking at it, it doesn't actually look that loose, but when I was knitting it, I felt like it. And when I blocked it, I did initially feel like it was too loose. So what I decided to do, and we'll see if this works. <laughs> I think it will. So I actually knit the entire thing in a size five. So I went, I did the 53 inch bust and instead of using a four for the neck, I used a five to hopefully make it more loose. But then instead of using a six for the body, I used a four, five to make it tighter. Um, and I, I like the fabric better. This is obviously pre-blocking, but I really like, like you can see all my like wonky stitches there. <laughs> It'll block out. It's just, it's part of the process. Um, but I think this is just a better fabric. Um, this is my first time knitting with this yarn. This is very quickly becoming one of my favorite yarns. I honestly, I'd bought some before. <laughs> if I can get it without like totally causing a cascade. Um, so I got the four ply of this before and it's in the Sunday kind of love colorway. Um, and this is on their original base. This is on their ecru base. So that's why it looks so bright. Um, it's because the, the base they dyed on is a, a whiter base. This is on a grayer base. I still, I love this color. Um, now that I'm feeling them though, they feel like the same. Hmm. That's so funny how sometimes a yarn can feel more rustic to you and other times it feels like the softest thing ever. Interesting. Um, anyway, so this yarn, I, I'll say that is kind of a funny thing I've noticed. Like sometimes I'll pick it up and I'm like, mm, it feels kind of scratchy. And then other times I'm like knitting with it and I'm like, this is the softest yarn I've ever used in my life. Um, but it is really soft. It is really soft. It is a delightful process. So part of the reason I don't use acrylic yarn and I have nothing against acrylic yarn. If that's what your budget allows, if that's what you like, use it. Um, there's some really nice acrylics out there. But for me, it, knitting is a tactile process. And so if I don't like the feel of what I'm knitting with, I don't really like knitting on it. It's just not enjoyable. And so what's really nice about using nice yarn like this is that you not only like the final project or product, but the process is really nice. <laughs> So this is just a really enjoyable project to work on. That being said, I tried to knit so much last night that I gave myself like tendonitis. <laughs> so uh, I had to keep taking breaks and like massaging my hands. And uh, so moderation in all things, right? Um, what else was I gonna say? I don't remember what I was gonna say. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was knitting a lot last night and watching everybody's vlogmas. And to those of you who do vlogmas, like, bravo. That looks bonkers. <laughs> I'm not doing vlogmas. The, once a week is the most I will agree to. Um, 
that's just a lot of work. So seriously, bravo to you. Thank you for doing it. I enjoy watching it. Um, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I was watching, I watched like five different podcasts last night. It was delightful. Um, and I was knitting and I haven't finished them all. So there's still more. I think I have like two more to watch today, which is great. Um, I'm going to do that in Christmas movies. So that, okay, two more whips. One of them is a baby whip. And hopefully no one from my, my community group at church watches this. I don't think any of them do because none of them are knitters. Um, but we're doing a gift exchange on Thursday. And like, I could not think of what to get. So I just decided I'm going to knit a hat. So I'm doing another, why do I want to, I keep wanting to call it the muscle burrow and it's not, it's the watch cap hat. I have exactly two rows. <laughs> that is it. Um, and I'm using Pearl Soho worsted twist. And I don't think they make this color anymore. I don't remember what it was called, but I actually skeined this up, skeined this up wound this up in order to make a Sophie scarf and my, or scarf, Sophie shawl. And my thought process was I'll just start, cause I only had one skein of this. I was like, I'll just start it and then I'll order more. And I started it, I had like an inch and I went on the website and they don't have it anymore. So this is gonna be a hat. But I thought this was a good gender neutral, anybody who picks it, can wear it. It goes well with pretty much every skin tone. Um, it's soft, but I also, I can knit this pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, so that's my dinky little whip. Um, my last whip is from an advent calendar. Um, so I will, I'm going to try really hard not to show anything. Although <laughs> that's funny because I've, only done one stripe. I'm so far behind. Um, so I got the Woolens and Nosh Advent Sock. Um, oh, I can't pull on that. That'll give it away. Oh, okay. So she, I'm just gonna like, I'm not gonna give any colors away. This is a color that you can already see when you get the kit. So she gives you this cute little canvas bag. And I just think this is so clever. So they're self-striping Christmas socks. And so you, or holiday socks. And so you knit um, one stripe every day of Advent. And she does this, so she has them each coming out, like she has them individually wound, and then you have your starting point there. And so this is the, um, the contrast color. So this you see already, so this is not giving anything away. Um, but you can like do your heels and toes and, and cuff in this. And then this is the interrupter color, interrupter color, intervening color. Uh, so you do one stripe and then when you come to this color in the skein, like when you're pulling the thread out or the yarn out, um, that's when you know to stop. And so it's really cool because you don't accidentally give it away. Um, but <laughs> I did this last year and I loved it. Um, I did the DRK everyday socks last year with this. This year I decided I wanted to do a top down sock cause that's just my jam. But I like to knit them two at a time, but I hate two at a time socks. So let me explain. Um, uh, so there's a way of doing socks where you have both of them on one needle and you get like a super long, uh, magic loop and you literally knit two different balls of yarn but you knit two socks at the same time. I have done that. I hated it. Um, I think it's something that like, if you really understand it very well, it's probably fantastic. It took a lot of like mental gymnastics for me to figure it out. So I don't like doing that. But what I do is I have two separate needles. And so I knit them at the same time. I usually knit them in the morning while I'm getting like, I'm like listening to an audiobook having my breakfast and I'll knit. So I do this in the morning so that nobody spoils it for me later in the day. <laughs> Cause I really, really hate spoilers. Um, but the night before 
I start looking around the house, I cannot find my other sock needle. So I like to knit mine on US one and a half because I have a big leg and a big calf and big feet and using like little tiny sock needles doesn't work for me. Um, so I'm like looking everywhere and I could not find it. I could only find one. So I had to buy a second one. And if there are any local places that sell it, I'm not aware. So I, had, I bought it online. Um, so I had to wait for it to ship. So I could only do one at a time. And then I actually completely forgot the other day. I <laughs> just totally forgot that this, I think I just showed it. I'm really sorry, but this is only day one. And today, by the time you're saying this, it'll be December 4th. So it's not really a spoiler. Um, but if you don't want to see, if you're behind and you don't want to see, look away. Um, but this is day one of the Lones and Nash advent sock so this is the little starter color i'm just on the ribbing at this point it might be a little big but we're gonna go with it um i did 72 stitches on a one and a half this is a very plump yarn so these are gonna be like the squishiest socks ever but my goal today is to catch up because my other needle arrived already so i'm going to cast on the second sock and then catch up today but that is my first advent and my last whip, I think. Yeah. Okay, this is getting hot, so I'm gonna take this off and have some lovely hat hair. It's cool, it's cool. Drink some water. Okay, I have some acquisitions. Let's. Since I was just talking about Advents, let's finish out the Advents. I'm gonna try really hard not to give anything away beforehand. So I got, I got a lot of Advents this year. What happened, I think, is I bought them and then forgot because you buy them in like July, June and July, and they don't ship till November. So it's very easy to forget that you've bought them. And like one of them, I don't even think, I think they had an issue with I think it was um, stress knit. Stacy, I think she had an issue with her post office, like not scanning them or something or whatever, some issue with tracking. And so I didn't get a notification, just showed up. <laughs> like, all right, cool. So yeah, I'd forgotten I bought these, but I have, aside from the Woolens and Nash one, I have three Advents. And then I also got the Woolly Mammoth, 12 days of Advent, 12, 12 tide Advent calendar. And I think that one you're supposed to start on Christmas day. And I am a rule follower and I love, uh, what's it called? Delayed gratification. Is that the right term? I love that. So I don't, I open them on schedule. <laughs> so I, um, I've opened the first three days of, so I did stress nets, I did chain fiber and I did farmer's daughter calendars. So I'm going to show those. I'm going to give you guys plenty of warning. I don't like to be that person, but I've only, so you guys are going to see this on the fourth. Today it's the third. So that's, I haven't opened up any more than the third on each one. So I'm going to start with the stress knits one. So her theme was, um, was, uh, houseplants, which is really cool. So I am an avid gardener. I absolutely love gardening. I murder houseplants at an alarming rate. Um, Houseplants do not make sense to me. I still have them. I keep buying them. And usually they'll last for about a month and then just die. And I've, it's, it's, it's just a mess. What I have now, I think actually, so I bought a houseplant. <laughs> I bought three at the local garden center and they just flourished to the point that I actually at one point was like, they sold me fake plants. These are fake. Like that's why they're still alive. They're not, they're real. I don't know what it is, but we get along and they are alive. And so I'm just not gonna, they're not being moved. I'm gonna keep watering them at the same frequency, which is basically when I remember, probably should do it soon. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I love that she did houseplants. Um, so I'm gonna show you day one. She also doesn't name them, which I like. Um, 
because a it's probably really hard to think of names for this many like colors that you're not going to like make part of your normal dyeing re repertoire words are hard um but yeah she also did it because she's like you know you should use your imagination and let it remind you of what you it reminds you of whatever so I'm going to show you the first one. I'll hold it up for like five seconds. So if you don't want to see it, close your eyes and maybe plug yours. Ready, set, go. So this is the first one. It's a pretty little teal aqua. I wasn't counting, so I hope that worked out okay. <laughs> okay. The second one, I guess I could look at the timer on my phone. Um, okay. So the second one's going up. One, two, three. So this one is like a creamy white, really pretty. It's down. Okay, and day three, I'm gonna wait till my timer gets to an easy. All right, ready, go. So this one is like a darker, so this is what we have so far. So I really like them. I think that's really pretty. Okay, so try not to like flash anything. So the next one I'm going to do is the Ching Fiber. Oh no. Did she? Nope. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's get these guys in order. So this is a fade. The Ching Fiber one is a fade. So you, I think you could choose between like a muted fade and a vibrant fade. So I went with the vibrant. Um, and I love it. I'd never gotten a... Um, I've actually never worked with Ching Fiber before. But... Um, the pictures for the advent were so pretty. This was absolutely a like right before bed impulse buy. But I'm gonna hold these three up together since it's a fade. So this is day one, two, and three. I'm gonna hold it up in like three seconds and I'll hold it up for probably like six seconds. Ready, go. So this is the first three. Super pretty. Okay, those are down. <coughs> Okay, so the last one is the Farmer's Daughter. I think they call it a Celestial Countdown. And one of the things I love about the Farmer Daughter, Farmer's Daughter Fiber Countdown is that it's not just yarn. So they include, like when I did it last year, I, I haven't gotten into any specials this year. I'm not giving anything away. But last year I think they did, they did like some bath salts. And there was one that was like a bath tea, which was really cool. Um, and they did like a lip balm. So there's like some self care items in there, which was really fun. Um, but then also some beautiful yarn. Um, so I think it's in the squish DK or is it fingering? I don't know. I already like got rid of. So this one came in like a massive box, like huge box and each one is in its own little box with a number on it so I actually got rid of the big box because I'm it's oh, I'm looking over here because that's where they all are um I like put them all on my dresser top over there and I had to fit them all in so I took the big one out of the box and like arranged them all pretty so I'm gonna show you the first one on this I am loving this calendar by the way so, um, the first one is going up in three, two, one. It's like this beautiful dark navy. I love it. Okay, it's down. And then the second was actually not yarn. So, let me get it up. I may have accidentally flashed it already. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, so, I will show it in three, two, one. So it's this cute little stitch marker or progress keeper. I guess it's a stitch marker, but I love it. It's like, yeah. Oh, I was going to put it over there. So that was day two. And then day three, I'll show in three, two, one. Oh, it's so pretty. Like, ah, oh, love it. Okay. I'm done. Done with advents. No more spoilers or accidental spoilers. Hopefully that didn't spoil it. I tried to count it down. Hopefully that worked. I really hate it when people spoil things for me. I, like I said, I'm a rule follower. I enjoy the anticipation every year of like, 
not knowing what the next day is, that's really fun for me. And so when people spoil it, it's like, <laughs> thanks a lot. Um, so that's all the advents I have. Um, so I have some acquisitions and some plans. If acquisitions aren't your jam, uh, actually, let me talk about the plans first in case acquisitions aren't your jam. That way you don't have to stop watching now. So, um, I, my original plan for my niece for Christmas, one of my oldest niece was to knit her a sweater, but I've been like putting that off, putting that off. I did swatch, but my gauge is like three stitches smaller. So it was supposed to be 21 stitches per four inches and mine was 24. So, um, that means my gauge is tighter than what they did in the pattern. Um, so I was going to have to like adjust the size a little bit. And then I was kind of torn, like, do I want to make it a little bit looser or want to get it more form fitting? And I wasn't really sure. So I was kind of hemming and hawing and then I kept doing other cast ons. <laughs> so I, uh, I decided her birthday's in January. So I think what I'm going to do is actually knit her a sweater for her birthday. And then I'm going to knit both of them hats, both my niece's hats for Christmas. So the baby, she's, I mean, she's going to always be the baby. She's 18 months. We went um, to these really cool thing called the pop-ups in Oklahoma City. So they have them in like uh, Midtown Oklahoma City every year around December. And it's uh, every weekend they have local shops and vendors come and it's like a little outdoor market. It's really cute. They called it... Well, I think the name didn't have to do with this, but originally all of the vendors were in these little igloo tents, which was really fun. Um, but then when the pandemic hit, you couldn't have like tons of people crowded in these little enclosed igloos. So they still have a few of them now, but mostly it's like an open air market. Um, and they have lots of really cute stuff. But we, we went to the Harvey for breakfast as a family, which was loads of fun. And then we just walked down to the pop-ups because it's like a seven minute walk outside. And Robin, the baby, kept ripping her hat off. <laughs> she like, it was really tight on her, but my sister like put it on her and she just immediately rip it off. And so I had an idea and I actually got this idea from Emma Robinson from Wooly Mammoth Fiber Company. So she knit her daughter a balaclava from Petite Knit. So I think that's what I'm gonna do is knit Robin a little balaclava out of super soft yarn, but I figured that way she can't like get it off as easily <laughs> and keep her head warm. Um, so my thought was to do that, oh, it's about to come undone, um, with some Pearl Soho worsted twist. I think this is the peony colorway, peony pink. Um, but this is like a, this is a worsted weight, but it's not an Aran. And the pattern calls for an Aran. And so it, and I don't want it to be really loose in it. I want it to be like snuggly and warm. Um, and the November balaclava is in Fisherman's Rib. So it's already going to be kind of more like a brioche feel, I think. Um, so I don't want it to feel too light. So what I thought about doing is I had some Posy from Pearl Soho. I hope that's not blowing out like crazy. Get my head out of the way. There we go. Um, so this is Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon, but it's more of like a sport weight, figuring weight kind of thing. And it's this color is Pink Nectar. So they're very similar colors. So it'd be like a very low contrast moral. So I think I might do that. I think I actually may cast this on today. You know, amongst all the other billion things I'm doing. But um, this, I mean, it's it's an Aran weight baby hat, essentially. So it's going to knit up really fast, even though it is fisherman rib. Um, so I think I'm going to do this today. Um, so that will be her Christmas present. And then the older one, Charlotte is just, she, I love her. I love both my nieces to death. Charlotte is just energy personified. <laughs> She's so creative and so like exuberant. And I just feel like she needs a hat that matches that personality. So 
Oh, goodness. Let's see if I can get all this. I have a few thoughts knocking around in my head. Um, so, I think what I'm going to do is use, I had some extra posy and make a hat like that. So I think I'm gonna do the brim in this and I'll probably hold it double. Um, so do the brim in this and do like a folded brim and probably tack it down so it doesn't come unfolded. And then double strand this for the, the body of the hat. But then I got this idea of mixing in some of this King Cole Cosmos yarn, the like sequin yarn. I only have it in black thread. Um, if someone knows of a US company that is selling this in the gold with, with rainbow sparkles or sequins, let me know. Um, I tried finding, I know there are some, but like my brain just went blank and I couldn't remember what they were. Um, so I will still use this. Um, I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. I'll still use this if I can't get it. Um, the only reason I'm not buying it from, I know there are Canadian stores or shops that sell this stuff. The only reason I'm not buying it from a Canadian shop is a shipping around the holidays is going to be delayed and cost of shipping. If this is all I'm buying, I don't really want to spend a lot of shipping for just one of these. <laughs> so, um, if I can't get one, that's fine. I'll just use this, but if I can, I would like to get a gold one so it blends a little easier. And then the other thought I had, and this may not, this may not be doable, but um, I found this pom-pom at Anthropology last year. <laughs> this is not the coolest thing ever. Um, my only concern is this is a big pom-pom. Like on me, this is a big pom-pom. On a four-year-old's head, this is gonna be, like I'm afraid it'll pull the hat off. It is really light. Like this is not heavy, but I just still think, plus it's not the, it's not the yarn blower kind. It's got like a little snap. So what they were doing is they were selling hats, pre-made hats that oh, there's like, <laughs> it's releasing fuzz in the air. Uh, but they had hats that already had the, the snap on the top and then you'd buy mix and match, match pom-poms that you could snap on um and so this only came with one half of the snap so i need to buy the other half to make this work um and i just haven't done that so part of it is because i i keep forgetting to either measure it or bring it with me when i go to like michael's and so i just haven't i don't want to like buy one and then it'd be the wrong size so um I don't know. I think that might, I, I, well, I think it would like perfectly match this theme. It just might be a little big. So I probably could make one of my own. This isn't that hard. Just get some multicolored yarn. I have pom-pom makers. I might do that, but that's, oh, I almost sent that flying. That is my plan um, for Christmas knitting. Then that's really about it. Nobody else is getting Christmas presents that are hand knitted from me. I just don't have time. Um, but yeah, so that concludes the non-shopping part of this podcast. If you are not into acquisitions or you're trying to not watch things that encourage you to buy more stuff, totally understand. I will see you in a week. Um, but if you are interested in acquisitions, I don't have a ton of them. I've slowed down. I have restraint, but I did buy some stuff and it arrived and it's beautiful. So let's get into that. Okay. So Pearl Soho did a sale for Black Friday. It's like 25% off all their stuff. Um, I'll actually start with this one. If I can figure out how to open it. Oh, I know why I couldn't open it. Because they put a sticker on it. Oh, there we go. Ha! Yay, nails. Okay, so I've used this stuff before and I love it. And so I knew I wanted to buy more of it. And it hasn't, it's either been out of stock or like not included in the sales. But this one was. So I love their sweater soap in the Bergamo scent. I am an Earl Grey girl at heart. I love bergamot. 
we have a funny sound. Um, oh, it smells so good. Now, I think, I was looking at this the other day. I'm pretty sure this is more of a plant-based. Um, I put my old lady glasses on. Um, so this is organic plant-based saponified oils, organic vegetable glycerin, guar gum, bergaptine free bergamot, essential oil, and rosemary extract. So it doesn't have lanolin in it. I didn't know that until I read this literally like two days ago. Um, but I still think it works really well. Um, knowing that this doesn't have lanolin in it, I probably in the future, if I have like a really rough or rustic wool, I probably will use euclan, which I have. Um, actually, ironically, right here. So I have it in the lavender. I don't know why it's up here. I don't block things up here. That's weird. Um, whatever. Uh, but this one, the smell is so good. Oh, I love it. Like I've pretty much blocked everything I own in this and it comes in this giant jar. So I've had mine for like a year and a half, two years, and I'm just now down to halfway. Um, but I decided since it was on sale and it doesn't normally go on sale that I was going to buy one. So I think they're normally 24 bucks, but again, this will last you for minimum of a year, probably two, if you don't like use a ton of it or you don't knit a ton. Um, so it's still a good deal, I think. Um, but I think I got it for 18 bucks on the sale, which is great. So that was the first thing I bought. The second thing I bought, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't need yarn. Let's just start there. Let me get, again, apologize for all the dog hair on my tights when I stand up. Um, I'm just going to do this. So the obsession with the half and half triangle wrap continues. Um, I'd mentioned before that I wanted to do like a neutral half and half because I use them as blankets. Um, and I love the one I have, but it is bright red. It doesn't match anything in my living room. So I bought three of the linen quill. Get my head out so it'll focus. And this is in the pale oats colorway. So my original thought, is I had wheat flour and putting these two together. So it's like a really subtle contrast. But then I looked at them and I was like, that's actually like too subtle. It almost looks like half of it got like stained or something like you accidentally, like, you know, when they used to like dip stuff in tea to, to dye it naturally. I don't know if anybody else's mom did that. Um, but that's kind of what this would look like. So then I had some still water blue which is like a really like almost like blackish brown blue. I thought that would look really pretty together. So I think this is what I'm going to do for <laughs> say my next half and half wrap, but like I'm still working on my next half and half wrap. It's another one of those, like it, it's almost like an in-between projects kind of project. Like when you can't make up your mind and you don't have any deadlines, and you just, which I don't, deadlines are self-imposed for me. Um, but anyway, so that was the first one. And then the second one was some more worsted twist. And this is also in the Stillwater Blue colorway. Get my head out of the way. Um, I got four of these to make a Sophie scarf. Shawl, shawl, the big one. Um, so I think this will just be like exceptionally exceptionally squishy um but it's also like almost a black but almost a blue so i'm hoping it'll work with both um and it'll just be like the best layer when it gets cold out i think this will also because it's worsted slash aaron i think it'll go so fast so this is this is my uh next sophie shawl and then the last thing I bought, I believe it was on Small Business Saturday. I should clarify, it's not the last thing I bought. It's the last thing that's already arrived of what I bought. There are more, there's more coming. <laughs> Don't fear, there will be acquisitions in the next podcast. Um, so because I love working on my weave sweater so much, I decided to buy some more Sonder yarn. Oh my gosh, that color. My whole life, pink has pretty much been my favorite color, but I would say probably in the past five years, green is really creeping in there. And I might even say green is now my favorite color. 
Like that is my jam. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> I really hope my neighbors can hear this outside. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, it's great. Um, so this is, I think this is also the Ecru base. And this is Wildwood. Yeah, and this is the DK. So I got six of these. Um, and I think it was when they were doing, maybe it was their birthday sale. Maybe that's what it was. It was like 20% off your order. Which is like irresistible to me. So I bought this thinking I'll just knit some kind of sweater in it. And then today, well, Saturday, you guys seeing this, it'll be Sunday. On Saturday, the Gardergan pattern came out. Oh no, I'm gonna forget her name. Tori Knits, I think is her name, uh, or her, her handle. Um, and that just like, oh, that pattern looks so nice. Uh, so it's a cardigan in garter stitch. It looks amazing. I've never knit a cardigan, at least not for myself. I think I knit a baby cardigan once. Um, but I actually, it's, so it's knit in Sonder DK for Sunday morning DK. And I actually bought exactly the number of skeins I need winning. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I have it in my cart on Ravelry. I just need to like buy it. Um, so I'm actually thinking, cause I'm still trying to decide, but I think this might be my betwixt miss knit because it's garter, it's garter. So it's going to be, you know, all knit and it is, yes, I think it is anyway. Um, it's in DK. So realistically, I can't, I don't think I could knit a fingering weight sweater in seven days. I don't think that's possible. I think I, maybe I could, I think I'd end up with horrible carpal tunnel if I did that. Um, but DK, I could probably do. And I love this yarn so much that I know it's going to be a delightful experience as far as like the tactile. I love garter. It's going to be squishy and lovely. The only thing is if I can hold out for three more weeks before I cast that on. So, um, we'll see. The other thing I'd kind of thought about, and I'm like, I keep reminding myself not to do this, but I bought yarn in Amsterdam for a, I'm trying to get it, um, of this stuff, the, the West Wool for a, now all I can think is tandem, Lento for a Lento sweater. And I have matching mohair, but the sweater I knit last year for Betwixt Mess was this. <laughs> I believe this is the Paloma. And I knit this in Amelia and Philomene, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. And I just, <laughs> I think that's too similar for back-to-back Betwixt Messes. I need to wear this, man, this is soft. Oh, I did ribbing for that long? <laughs> I have no memory of this. This is probably because it was the Twix Miss. I never do ribbing that long. Gosh, that's like seven inches. I'm impressed with myself. Dang. Okay, well maybe I'll wear this. I wonder if it'll be cold enough tomorrow. I can wear this tomorrow. Oh, that's so nice. I'm putting this out. Anyway, so I'm probably not going to knit this for Betwixtmas just because it's too similar to the one I did last year. So that's kind of left me then in a lurch of like, oh, what am I going to knit for Betwixtmas? So I think I will um, do the card again. I, sorry, what was going through my head just now was the realization that I'd never mentioned the giveaway winners. <laughs> so I meant to do that at the beginning. So people didn't have to watch the whole thing to see who the winners are. So I'm sorry if that's the case. Hopefully you just fast forwarded. Um, I have one more acquisition and then I will absolutely say the giveaway winners. Um, so or maybe I could like splice it and do that at the beginning. I hate editing though. This whole like recording it all in one go is the best thing ever because then you don't have to splice things together and it just makes your life easier. So 
Maybe I'll put, here's what I'll do. In the show notes description box, I will put a timestamp for when I announce the winners. I will do that. That way, if you are watching and you are thinking she forgot to mention the winners, or I don't feel like watching an hour of this woman rambling about yarn, <laughs> then you can just fast forward. Um, we'll do that. Okay. So the last thing I got was from Wooly Mammoth. Um, it's always funny when I get Wooly Mammoth yarn here. Um, her packaging is lovely. It's like plastic free. It's always just, it feels rustic and delightful, but the way it's shipped here, it is signature only. So you have to sign for it and I'm never home. <laughs> so I always get a door tag. And then the next day I have to go pick it up at the post office, which is fine. I'm like really close to the post office. Um, but it's always funny when I come home and I see a door tag, I'm like, oh, Wooly Mammoth. Um, so she had a festive extravaganza. I think that's what she called it this year. When it was like, she had different makers and, you know, festive yarn. So I got some yarn. So this one is called Feast by the Fire. And this is in her natural sock. I love her. I love this yarn. I just think it's so pretty. Kind of just like looks like, I don't know, like blackberry jam is mixed in or something. I don't know what the yellow would be in that case, but <laughs> it looks really pretty. I can imagine this being a pair of socks. Um, I think I actually, I got her advent last year or two years ago. I don't remember. Um, but it might have a good contrast color in here because I haven't used it yet. And then this was the real reason I bought yarn from her this year. Oh, well, not the real, this, this round, because I saw this and I was like, I need this in my life. This is a mini skein set. <laughs> is this not the most festive and cheerful mini skein set you've ever seen? I love it. And I love that she includes like speckle or like variegated with tonals. Like, to be honest, these three are my jam. These three are, like, these three are amazing. But I like that she mixes in other colors too. So it's not just like all solids. Um, so I don't remember what this one's called. Oh, mini skein set, Christmas mini skein set 2022. So it's a hundred grams. So this is enough to knit socks out of. So I might make myself some stripey socks, but I might also make a hat. We'll see. Okay. So that is all, yeah, that's all my acquisitions. So time for the giveaway. So this actually worked out perfectly because uh, all three of the, the winners wanted different things. So everybody's getting what they asked for. One person didn't mention what they wanted, so they're just getting what wasn't claimed. Um, but yeah, if you said what you wanted, that's what you're getting. So that worked out perfectly. So I will put the names of the three winners um, up here and I'll leave that up there for a minute. So to claim your prize, you need to send me an email to Sunday knitting society at gmail.com and let me know your name and your address. Um, and then I, if you get it done today, you won't be able to get it done today because I'm not posting this till tomorrow. <laughs> Never mind. Um, yeah, once you let me know your address, I will try to get this in the mail to you as soon as I can. Um, it just depends if I can get to the post office before they close uh, after work. So if I can do that, I will send it to you. Um, well, I will send it to you anyway, but I'll try to get it out as soon as I can. So, um, last one. Uh, reading their comments was honestly the best thing ever. <laughs> you guys had the funniest stories. I loved it. Um, I was like, I was crying, laughing, reading them. They're so funny. I was like telling my work colleagues, I was, or my coworkers, work colleagues sounds pretentious. I was telling my colleagues, coworkers, um, all these different stories. So I definitely in the future for giveaways, I'm going to make you guys tell me funny stories because it's the best. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for participating. Um, I will probably continue to do giveaways periodically. We'll just see. Um, obviously I have plenty of yarn. Um, I don't need all the yarn that I have. So, um, I may do things like this in the future. Um, 
But anyway, uh, so that is all I have for today. I'm going to clean up this mess in here. Uh, there's a lot of mess in here. I'm going to clean this up. Um, clean my kitchen because it is a disaster right now. I have a cleaning lady who's phenomenal, um, but I find that before she comes, I pre-clean, which is probably a good thing. It's kind of training me to clean my house, but um, it's also like, like, I don't want to scare her away. That's the main thing. I don't want her to walk in and see what I'm really like <laughs> and decide that she's done. So I pre-clean for her. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna sit and watch Christmas movies and knit, try to separate the sleeves on my weave sweater and then start a baby balaclava. And then I have a Christmas party for work tonight, which will be loads of fun. Um, and yeah, and then hopefully Sunday will be a chill day. I hope it is for you too. Um, I hope you get lots of knitting time and just relaxing time before your week starts. Um, and I will see you guys in a week. Probably, I say this, it probably won't be as long, but it might. I do like to ramble about yarn. So, um, yeah, so I'll see you in a week and congratulations to the winners. Just shoot me your email, your email, shoot me your address and I will get those packages to you in the mail. See you guys.